This is a podcast about both having autism and living with someone who has autism. My mom is Sonia, and I'm Josh, and this is Josh Has Autism. Hey everybody, welcome to Josh Has Autism. Hello. Oh, so glad you're here with us. Yeah. And then, Josh, mm-hmm. today I want to really follow up on our last podcast that we did with Richard. Okay. Yeah, because he gave some really great ideas and way for you to um, follow through and execute your responsibilities. And when you say you're going to do something, to be able to do that. Yeah. And um, we talked about that after the podcast, too. And uh, I really think that it made a difference. He, for, he helped me a lot to understand that, oh, well, just kind of in a nutshell, Dad and I don't have to take so much time to explain everything that wouldn't be retained by anybody anyway, <laughs> but rather tell you what the out, what we're trying to accomplish and then break it down in little pieces in, in the front side of it. Yeah. So that it was really cool that he said, basically, an example. He did, he did use this, but it's a, a fantastic example. That when your dad is building something, you don't need to have all of the information that it takes to, to create something, to build something, He's just asking you to come and do specific parts to of, help him. Yes, yeah. specific work on a given day. Right. And you don't have to have all the answers because he knows what he's doing. Right. He's the one that's doing it. Right. And for me anyway, that was just real like a huge aha. Like it was just so so helpful because it's not that we don't have to explain everything to you and that was the big problem that we were having that we couldn't move forward at all until everything was explained Mm. and then you still wanted it only broken down into like like we would explain it and you'd be like so what are we doing (laughs) because in in my perspective I want to know what you said in the, the in a nutshell explanation is perfect for me at least okay. that what the goal is for that day or of what's being done mm-hmm. and then as they come up the the steps that need to be done yes as they come up not necessarily all the steps at once because that won't be retained but for a while it felt like that's what we were stuck in doing because you were saying like you didn't understand, like you couldn't get started. So for our point of view, we explained it as best we could. And then that wasn't, I, I'm putting in quotes, enough. It's It wasn't enough because... From my perspective. Yeah, because yeah. what we were explaining wasn't helpful to you. Right. I still don't know exactly what it is that you would want out of that situation kind of situation Mm -hmm. but i will tell you that that since the podcast with richard how he said that like for you he point blank said you know leave your dad alone he knows what he's doing (laughs) if he messes up he messes up that's on him he's not worried about it right you know right so it really i i guess i have spent so much time trying to get into your head and do my best to explain things that ultimately what happens is we're all frustrated by everything, Mm -hmm. all the conversation. And so telling you what's going to happen. So like the end, right? We're telling you what's going to happen in the end. Right. And then we go back to the beginning and say, please do this. Take, for example, take this and move it out to there, to this place, right? From this place to this place. And if you have questions about that, you can ask. Yes. So, like, you would want to know, do you want it moved, as an example, propped up against a wall or laid flat on the floor? Or on something that's on the floor. Yeah, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. 
but telling you what's the end result, why we're doing all these steps, and then just asking you to do specifics is much easier, I've found, on all of us, and I would think it's much easier on you. Yes. And my one of the problems that I have, that I know I have problems with, in regards to that, is that uh, it's twofold. One, where I just, it doesn't click. No matter what's being explained to me, it doesn't click, so I don't understand. Mm -hmm. So I cannot move forward. And that's an issue that that I have and have had and will continue to have at times. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. <laughs> but, and the second thing is when an explanation is given that doesn't click. So I, so at this point in my life, I know to ask, can you please explain that to me in a different, in a different way? One, I'm able to put into words now, for example, that one of the one of the things I've noticed with with Dad and explaining something to me is that he does the same explanation just in a different order, same words, different order. That's not helpful. Uh, to me, it's not helpful. Uh, it, it's because I understand the words. I don't understand. Like it, it just doesn't comprehend what he's explaining to me. I've read some things before where I can read a sentence, mm-hmm. and I like kind of okay. And I look you, at it again, you, and you, I do it again. Yeah, you blink, and it's like, what the heck? What? Yeah, okay, wait a second. I know what every one of these words mean. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have no idea what this sentence is, is trying to convey. Yeah, and it could be, I've had it where simple four-letter words, where I read it in a, in a book, I'm like, wait a second, is that... Is that actually how it's spelled? Right. <laughs> like yes, yes. Yeah, like I've re- I've so, read it for years that way, and then I'm I took a second glance at it. I'm like, wait, really? <laughs> yes, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yep. and that's yep. just yep. a very minor version of what we're talking about. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Um, but I do want to say that that to back up just a little bit, that we've had some really great help from some awesome people that. Um, listen to the podcast and has have sent us messages yes. and also Richard helping with us helping us on the podcast and then I've talked to him afterwards too and the information that I keep getting is that is that he was such a big help for people to be able to see things in a different way and you know I don't know um who benefited more from this, you know, you being on the podcast, having him on the podcast with us, or me, because I'm t- saying that because of his insight, I have a totally different um, approach to asking you to participate with some things um, and to be able to make it easier. And it, And again, I will repeat this. I would explain it ahead of time thinking that that was beneficial for you. And what I'm doing based on what he was talking about is give you the end result. This is what we're working towards. This is what we're trying to build here, trying to create, trying to get to right, happen, right. whatever it is. And then say, okay, so that's where we're headed. Could you please do this is how I started doing it instead so that this is very clear cut concrete right 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 in my head I'm picturing it like uh, the goals for today in list form Mm -hmm. and then I don't need to see every step for those goals from your perspective yes because it makes it easier on me if I don't see all those steps because I get overwhelmed so if for each of these daily goals or whatever, if 
you tell me the step that I'm that I'm working on. Okay, I, I got it. Cool. I get it done. It gets completed. You give me the next step to get towards that goal. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. That work. That's how it. Sh- I think it will work best. And it sounds simple in this conversation, but I cannot, cannot possibly convey the stress level that has decreased by this simple switch of no longer... Which is funny. We (laughs) thought you needed these long explanations because you would be in front of us. We'll say, hey, we're doing this today. And you were like, uh, what 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 are we doing? What about, what about constantly right yeah. and, and it will, we would all just be so frustrated yeah and we would explain it and then it still wouldn't work and so oh mm. it was just so, frustrating for all of us yeah and I and this is what I'm saying this simple switch of telling you this is where we're ending up getting you involved in little pieces on what you know at yeah. a time yeah and make it much easier yeah. it just was huge um Another thing that that um, I, I got another email that I wanted to ask you about because this is super important and and we talk about the age of people you know with autism and when it was diagnosed and, mm-hmm. and you know um, there's a somebody sent sent an email and she's sixty eight years old and she was diagnosed um, two months ago um, with autism. Wow. And she's also got ADHD. And what she said was pretty interesting that um, she said that there's a doctor, Dr. Ned Howell. Hallowell, sorry, I mispronounced that. Dr. Ned Hallowell. He said, she said he describes ADHD brain as Swiss cheese brain. <laughs> so, so, so it explains the variability and reliability. Yeah, I can see that. And she shares, like she knows that this is true in her own life. Which I thought was super interesting. Um, but what she's saying is that the question, you know, is that... is. It's like a Swiss cheese brain. Is that sounds like autism in a lot of ways. Like when we talk about ADD or ADHD, um, a lot of times we're in with the doctors and psychiatrists or, you know, therapists, right. whatever. Right. <laughs> um, and that is the conversation of how do you define which part of a behavior is which part of a diagnosis and also, I mean, we've had the conversation too. Does it matter? Um, and it's super interesting how um, she's saying that part of what Richard is saying too, for you to just do it. It's like, can you just, the way she puts it, is just kind of force yourself to act and understand that those other stress levels around you I guess are have to be put in play. You know what I mean? Like the stress that happens in in everyday things. Yeah. Like like we were talking before on the last podcast. How do you just make yourself do something? Which has always been something that's struggle a struggle for you. Right. Um First off the Swiss cheese analogy. Now my mind is thinking about it. <laughs> and that's amazing (laughs) really it is because i mean there are some things that it that i mean you've definitely seen me experience this where it's like i come to a complete stop like i run to a brick wall or something Mm -hmm. mentally yes yes right (laughs) right Right. Uh, and it that's a very apt metaphor for uh as the the swiss cheese brain or my, what was it brain or mind? What, in, in in either case, Swiss cheese brain. Swiss, Swiss cheese brain. Okay, so uh, I know that Swiss cheese is what we call the cheese here. I don't know if it's the same in other countries or whatever. 
uh, Swiss cheese is the is the cheese that is full of holes. Mm-hmm. And so, in my mind right now, I'm thinking that's very apt because let's say I'm moving towards something and something comes up where it's I have to figure out a workaround to be able to do this. Mm-hmm. And sometimes there are bigger issues, which would be the holes that would prevent that. And sometimes there's smaller holes, but there's still the holes. Mm -hmm. So trying to work around them or work through them is very difficult. And so that's a brilliant metaphor, really. Mm -hmm. Um... The figuring out how to do that workaround, though, that is where a lot of the issues pop up in in my life and your life, and mm-hmm. because of because of that. So figuring out how to live with that with those holes or making it so that the holes are either worked into a a situation where you can work around it that's the that's the difficulty and uh i forgot the original question (laughs) (laughs) well we're talking um this this email that i'm talking about is from somebody named Lori. And what she's saying is that this, it's kind of like this, this, she's talking about a negotiation between you and I. Mm-hmm. And that how what she's commenting on is how um, we can both agree, like to buy into an, a, a result of a conversation. Like it has to be give and take so that I can't be the only one to give. And you can't be the only one to dictate the terms. Right. Um, And so it's really, it's, I think she really, she really gets it. And she's talking about how, like in that last podcast, we were talking about how, what you can do to regulate your stress levels, be mindful of that. And could you possibly be able to force yourself more to act, even when you don't feel able? But doing so, remembering um, that it will be at the expense of the stress level. I'm using Lori's words here, because I think she was just really great at articulating what we had just talked about, and where we are, and what we're trying to work through. Mm. But I like it too. Look, she said that, you know... I shouldn't be only one to have to give in all the time. Thank you, Lori. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I like it. But she's she's, she's talking about the the, the autism, the AD, ADHD. Mm-hmm. In your case, it's it's ADD. Mm-hmm. Um, and you are on medication for ADD right now, and it does make a difference. But. Um, So I so so talking about how can you how do you work with your stress levels and do you feel like from the last conversation that we had the last podcast that you've been able to implement some of those things in a different way Do I think that you've been able to implement some responsibilities, ways to to carry out your responsibilities in a new way since that last last podcast? So a lot of times what Richard said was, do it, don't put it for later. Right. Just, Just if you see that it needs to be done, do it now so you don't forget. Right. I, in, in, yeah. <laughs> so I 
for me, I know I need to do stuff before I forget it. Mm-hmm. And because if I go on to something else, I will forget. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's not what you're talking about. Uh, I don't think. I think it's that have you have you figured out any way to help get a handle on accomplishing the things that you are responsible for doing? So, I'll say this. We have been we, there will be more to come on the next podcast, but <laughs> this this uh which I love the term Josh Act. Oh no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Eck. Richard. Josh, yeah, Josh, Eck. Josh. Eck. No, uh, no. Okay. So, <laughs> Richard you, was the one who came up with that name. Yes, he yeah. did. So you are out there now. Yes. And what I've noticed is that you're following through on doing what you need to do. Um. And you're doing a great job of it. You're doing a great job of it. You've done laundry. Um, you're doing the things in the house that, you know, you would... Even more... This is very, very new. Um, but you really are. I was concerned about you being, you know, it's detached. Mm-hmm. So, it is part of the house, but it's detached. Right. And so, you know, thinking, you know, how are you doing out there and what have you, and it's really gone smoothly so far. Yeah. And so, what I'm saying is that I don't know why. I don't know if it's a combination of us gaining some clarity on kind of these ahas and based on the, the podcast we've been having. Right. Because we do the podcast and we hope that it helps other people. <laughs> but you and I admit, you know, from the very beginning, the podcast helped you and I yeah. the most. Yeah. Because we... It gives us insights into each other. Yeah. We're, you know, yeah. right in the moment, we're like, really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, yes. And, and I, I want to point this out right now, though, that this last week has been really difficult for me it may it you're saying that i'm doing a lot of stuff that, that well you're doing a lot of things well and for me it's i am enjoying the the peace out there that i don't really get here mm-hmm. and other than that, though, it's been very, almost fly-by-the-seat-of-your-pants feeling that I really don't care for. Right. Because there's been so much change. Yes. All at once. Right. Right. And so it's very difficult, very stressful. And I'm trying to work it out so that it is in a system like thing for mm-hmm. me to be okay mm-hmm. and it's somewhat working <laughs> uh, it, it's very uh, stressful right now mm-hmm. um, and trying to iron out all the kinks I guess is sure. the phrase um But right now, it, it it's very much working it into the routine uh, uh, to make sure I'm okay. Mm-hmm. So it's not 100% yet, uh, but I have been trying to make sure that things are okay. Not just for me, but your concerns. Mm-hmm. Well, I can point to some specifics so that you understand what I'm talking about. So, I agree with you completely because what you did was you took your stuff that's in your room, in your bedroom here, in the house, 
out to that space that's yours. It's it's the reason and and, and this wasn't just a haphazard um, um, hey, change let's build a place. either. Yeah, yeah. This was yes. This was was deliberate. It was on purpose, and it was through um, counseling with your psychiatrist as well. Whether they thought this would be a positive um, opportunity for you, would it you know help to for you to be removed from all the energies in the house from you know like when the kids are here. Um, yeah. And just give you a place to go where it's quiet and you can just get away from all of us. Yeah. Um, at the same time, being right here. Yeah. Like you come out I, of I, that I, building and you are a few steps from the back door. Yeah. It's that close. Yeah. And it is. I I call it. I jokingly called it a panic room or something like that. I think you did, yeah. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's more like a deep panic room. A deep panic room. Yeah, where I somewhere I can go to to calm down to de-escalate myself or whatever, however you want to say it. There's a song I don't know if you remember it a long time ago. It says, "Don't worry, be happy." Yeah, I remember it. <laughs> it's like that's your place. Yeah, yeah it it's where I can go that I don't have to worry about the kids possibly coming in and start all their loudness. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Yeah. It... So this is what I'm seeing. Um, is that the stress you, you have that on your face. Like I can tell when you're stressed and since you've been hanging out there, you are not near as stressed as you used to be. Right. And you're doing the things that you need to do. So, for example, you cleared the dishwasher. F from beginning to end without, you know, needing prompting and redirecting. And you just did it. And it's fantastic. And I, by the way, I appreciate that. The worst <laughs> chore. For you. For me. Yes, yeah. I hate it. So thank you for doing that. Yeah. Um, you did your laundry. Another thing that you did was, um, we have it set up so that I, I, I know what medications, you know, your medication is and use a pill bottle for that. But, um, anyway, you came and told me that you had a week's worth left of medicine. Yeah. I had initially told you a week and a half. Mm -hmm. Then I followed up. Yep. Whenever there was a week left. Yep. Yeah. So... I, I, here's what I would say that we're still in the beginning because you haven't even been out there for a week I guess it's been three days four days <laughs> something like four that days. yeah but already this totally this chill Josh <laughs> <laughs> walks in from, from out there I think it's fantastic um, I think the ability for you to separate yourself is exactly what you wanted it to be and it is what the psychiatrist said she felt it was going to be mm. like it's your it's this space that has a microwave a toaster oven a little refrigerator and my library yes the <laughs> library the library and we did take videos and everything so we're gonna um put the put those up on on the uh website yeah nice yeah so if so if you wanted to check those out i'm not uh, hopefully this weekend they'll get put up it's at sonya king dot com s o n y a k i n g dot com and you'll see josh's new new digs yeah yeah um but it does did exactly that so it makes me think that they're really so so look this is not a new concept but i'm saying in real time I know that you need things to be particular in such a way, in a certain way, and at a certain time. Mm -hmm. And you need to not have loud disruptions, a lot of loud noises. Right. Kids screaming up and down the hall. Every day. Yeah. <laughs> Which, in my world, we have a long hall. Yeah. And the kids have scooters. Yeah. 
And, we have, and we have wooden floors. I don't care. I just, look, you were raised in the kind of house it is too. Yeah. If it gets broken, mm-hmm. well, it can be replaced. If it can't be replaced, you know, it's, yeah, but... it's, you know, it's, I shouldn't have left it down. <laughs> you know and what I mean? With the, like and if, with the kids, I don't like them messing with my stuff for that exact reason. I get you. And anyway, them going up and down the hallway, it's it's sort of like coexisting with needs that are so you know uh, opposite from one another. They have all this energy. They need to get rid of it. It's cold outside. It's muddy. It's raining. Let's just, you know, let them go up and down the hall. I don't, I don't care. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but you don't have to put up with that now. Right. And if it gets obnoxious in the house, if we look, we get loud, we get carry on. Yeah. Um, you can just go out to your own a zenful <laughs> <laughs> space. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And one thing I have noticed uh, while out there is just how quiet it can be. And which is remarkable because I haven't had that in so long. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Uh, So what I was going to say to follow up, but because I didn't finish that. Oh, sorry. Is that, no, 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 I, you're you're fine. Is that. What I'm realizing is that, again, I knew this, but on a new level here, is that if you're an indication of what really helps a person with autism, it is that you having that space, that having that separation from all of the, you would call it chaos, I just think it's fun. Right, yeah, yeah. and it's just totally the same situation, the same. It's just a different yeah. interpretation. Yeah. Do you have the space to go and remove yourself, and to be in that quiet, and to be surrounded by your own things? Yeah. And it just feels. It seems like I was going to say how what you would, it seems like it feels to you, but you can describe this, because viewing you, you seem more balanced you seem calm or at least yeah (laughs) yeah yeah and uh it's having the option to be able to get away from what uh, what issues i may have here Mm -hmm. and be able to not have to worry about that for a little bit by going to that space and having that chance it is absolutely removing a lot of those stressors. Even if it's just for an hour at a time or something, even half an hour at a time, Mm -hmm. that's still a half an hour where I'm not as stressed, Mm -hmm. where it's not as, as much of a worry to have to deal with, with things like the kids running up and down the hallway right outside my door screaming. Mm -hmm. Right. Which I will point out that to me, things are loud. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I've noticed, especially in the in the last few weeks, even that it it almost seems like everybody is almost yelling to each other when they talk. Mm and it's so loud and it's why are you yelling Mm -hmm. I'm right next to you (laughs) (laughs) and so if I ask why are you yelling I'm not yelling I'm not (laughs) (laughs) and so it's I don't know it's it's an observation I guess Mm mm-hmm well, you're very sensitive to sounds, you know, to the lights in a room. Yeah. You know, and, and, but specifically the last few weeks, especially for sound. Okay. Which is why I bring it up, because you know 
growing up, I've had the, those uh, s- sensitivities to different sounds, lights, mm-hmm. and things like that, mm-hmm. and different senses. Mm-hmm. But I'm bringing it up now about the last few weeks because it's been especially uh, difficult. Yeah, I don't. Um, I don't know what that situation was. I don't know if, for some reason, we were being particularly loud. I could say yes if there was football on, and you know everybody's here watching the the game, and the kids are going, you know, doing yeah. their own thing, and because yeah. at any given time, there's enough of us that are around the house at any given time that we have different things going on right a lot of times like right i might be playing a game of sorry with mm-hmm. madison mm-hmm. connor's building legos with his dad yeah you know and while we're watching football yeah um you know so i don't know i don't know if we've been particularly loud or were you just getting to a threshold overload or something? point yeah. of like just all you people just <laughs> <laughs> Just put, <laughs> sh- shut it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I don't know. Yeah. Um, and so you are sleeping out there. Yes. And uh, it. I've been getting a bit more sleep than I had been in here. Okay. Good. Um. I have found that today I slept in. Yeah. And usually when I sleep in, or at least prior to sleeping out there, if I would sleep in, it would be to 10 or at 1030 the latest. Yeah. Because there'd be so much going on in here, I think. Yeah. And so I'm getting a little bit more sleep out there. But today I slept in... It was almost like 12, 13 minutes till noon mm-hmm. when I woke up. Mm-hmm. So it's like, wow. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because, um, I mean, I even, last time I'd looked at my, the time on my phone or whatever, it was like one thirty, two o'clock, which is normal for me. In the morning? Yeah. Okay. To fall asleep. Yeah. That was the last time or whatever I, I looked at it. And then I woke up then. Mm-hmm. I, Which is not usual because you usually I've been, you get up pretty early. And I've been getting at most in here, not not out there, but in here prior to that, I'd, be get, I'd get at most eight hours of sleep in a night. And that was rare. Uh, more often than not, I'd get three, three and a half to at the minimum to six Mm -hmm. and because I know that if I have less than three hours of sleep I'm not going to function the next day Mm -hmm. so there were nights where I'd look at the time and realize I'd have to get up in less than three hours so I'd have to force myself to stay awake because I wouldn't function the next day if I did fall asleep and that happened a lot yeah but uh, out there, I don't have. Peaceful. It is, and out there, I don't have that outside stim, literally outside stimulation, <laughs> right? To wake me up, right? Or to help wake me up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's like a little resort. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just without housekeeping. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's it. I've come to realize, and I told you this this morning, I think, that I need to put an alarm in my phone to make sure I'm up on the days I don't have things going on. Mm-hmm. Which, again, is something that's new for you because you wouldn't have even thought about that. Yeah. yeah. And so this, this, I guess, is just this refresh and renewed uh, experience that you're having is because you're sleeping more. 
you're more relaxed when you're out there. You have the separation, this thing, place you can go to yeah. that separates you when you need it. Yeah. And it's we've always done that, but it's just a bedroom that's in the house. Yeah. And and now it's you know a few feet away, but nonetheless, it's you know you're away from all of this the. Uh, Chaos. Chaos that you call it, and you know that goes on in here. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's so funny though, because it's chaos to you, and it's just, to me it's like family. Yeah. It's the same thing. It's like to me <laughs> the loudness, the carrying on, the you know. Yeah, it's yeah. I love it. Yeah. I love that everybody comes in and, you know, sees what's in the pantry. You know, <laughs> sees what's sitting out in the counters and yeah. open the fridge, whatever it is. And yeah. just, you know, I just, I love that. I love the kids having their toys here and their ability to just let loose. Yeah. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm so grateful that your dad has the ability to build this place. Yeah. For you. Yeah. Um. It's incredible. It's uh, everybody. You're gonna see it because we're gonna put the videos up. This place is gorgeous. Yeah. So yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. Um. Yeah. So, anyway, so just to recap the follow up from what we had done in the podcast last time, I really do feel like things that they've kind of clicked. We I have a better understanding of how to communicate with you. Mm -hmm. It's working better for you. Um. This concept of um, that Lori sent in in this email about the um, Swiss cheese brain. Yeah. <laughs> that really makes sense to you. Yeah. Well, um, thank you for sharing that. Yep. So, so that's pretty cool. And this space that you have now is really making a difference. And so I think that one thing that we can get out of that is that that everybody needs this. Even people like me that love all the family here. Yeah. You know, I yeah. need my own time. I need my time to write and R and R. Yeah. And well, well, writing for you, for you for you it's a uh, R and R and W, uh, rest and recuperation and writing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I have a show coming up on Saturday, so yeah. I'm I'm writing the order and getting the yeah all of this this get myself together for that yeah. so it's exciting but it is not uh helpful to have a bunch of noise Ooh, going on yeah. around me when i'm trying to do that yeah yeah anyway so good is there anything else that you want to share um i i don't know <laughs> okay okay no, that's cool yeah um uh thank you richard for for have being on the podcast and sharing this and helping us with with this communication issue we were having. Thank you, Lori, for sending this email and, and sharing with about the Swiss cheese brain and and the uh, <laughs> whether it matters or not for the for a diagnosis in regards to that. Yeah, I think that was mentioned in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And which Sophie is another one we 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 she helped us out last week when we were doing the podcast with some insight and some questions and yeah. it's really helpful because again what you and I know Josh what you and I know to be very true is that uh autism that we talk about is how uh, it presents itself in your life how you um, make your way through an, any given situation in every any given day yeah. and this is you know we talk about what you deal with and yeah. how you deal with it and it's so cool to be able to get feedback from people and it's different experiences yeah um, and it's so helpful it really gives a different dimensions to the the conversations. Yeah, and so I really appreciate so it. Thank you, Sophie. Yep, yep. And thank you, everyone, for listening. I, really, it is yes. it is helpful for us to talk this out in this way. But really, thank you guys for listening and 
and yeah. having questions that you can give us and everything like that. Thank yeah. you. And some insight. Yeah, so please keep it coming. If you want to contact us again, go to my website and there's a, a, a place there where it says to, I think, I think it says contact, or send a message or something like that. But it's s o n y a k i n g dot com, and that's how you can reach us. Yeah. And um, yeah, that'd be great. So everybody, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Um, this is feeling a bit lighter over here, so it's a good day. Yeah. And um, it's exciting to see Josh happier and more relaxed. I was beginning to wonder. <laughs> you know, because it was you were having a pretty a tough lot time. Of tough, yeah, a yeah. lot of issues. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So everybody, thank you so much for being with us and hanging out with us. And um, if you're so inclined, please give us give us five stars if you like what we're doing, because um, we're really trying to be heard by more people these days, and it's very helpful. So if you could do yeah. that, we'd appreciate it. Yeah. So anyway, we hope that you're very, very happy and healthy, and uh, living a great life. And uh, we will speak next week. Love you. Bye.